go down and make. Oh, I feel like we've heard a lot about um, your work in the film room like, over the past couple of weeks. Coaches will say they get in here, you're already in here watching film, and they, Corey said that yesterday. You've always had the athleticism, but how much of the success you've had this season do you attribute to just studying and learning how to, to, to be better at that part of the game, studying, you know, film studying, that kind of thing? Uh, that was the biggest thing that, you know, changed my perspective on, like, how to see the football games, you know, because athleticism is one thing, but, you know, especially at linebacker, like, all you got to do is take one wrong step and you already lost the play. So um, once I, Coach Manley already opened my eyes to that, then, you know, I just exaggerated it. So I made sure, like, I stayed on top of my field game because the linebacker, you got to you gotta do everything. Like, you're not just in the pass covers like a DB or just in the run game like a, a, like a D lineman. You really got to know everything. So I always try to prepare myself in the best way I can every morning for every practice. Even if it's just like, you know, from spring practice to fall camp to end season, I always try to prepare myself the same way. Is there a play that you've made this year that immediately you thought, that's because of that extra work I did? Or is, I don't know if there's an example you could give us that of a play you made that is because you did extra work like on a certain route or tendency or whatever, that, that's why it happened. Um, usually it's probably, um, I mainly say like when teens used to uh, run OZ a lot of times, I mainly say like simple plays like that. Uh, when I really uh, pay close attention to the simple plays, you know, because if you do the simple plays at your, you know, the best, then you're going to be the best at it. So, you know, a lot of teams, especially off of last year, a lot of teams, we had a lot of good stretch plays on us. So, you know, watching film, I was just keying a lot of stretch formations. A lot of tendencies, a lot of times when the tight end will be wider than his usual. And then, like, it'll give me, like, a, you know, a step or, like, I can help the DN tell him to line up wider, you know. So that was, like, the whole flow of the chain of the defense. So I definitely can say stretch plays. How much of your film work is opponent and how much is watching yourself? I don't really uh, watch myself. I would, like, usually watch myself probably Sunday, sometimes Monday. But in season, like, I'm always just on to the next, like, I watch myself during practice. I watch some practice film after practice, and then I'm already like going back to uh, the TV copy film, you know, the breakdown film. Trying to watch their trick plays. Trying to watch the plays they run on third down. I'm always just on to what they, you know, do because I already know like how I move. I already know how my body works. So I'm always like mainly just focused on watching the opponent. How many hours in the film room this season? Do you have an idea? Like how many on average we spend each time you spend? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't really count it because, you know, even though, like, I'm not in the film room, I still watch film on the iPad. So, um, you know, I watch film. Um, I always watch film before practice. I try to be, you know, the first people there. But, you know, we, we got some other people that, you know, come in, get some extra work, either as rehab or film too. And then uh, after practice, you know, I'll, I'll probably, like, sneak, like, uh, a couple of minutes, a couple, a couple hours a film during class, <laughs> you know, so I'll get some film through there too, but I definitely try to like, just repeatedly watch film throughout the entire day. How early do you try to get here? I usually get here around like 5.30. 5.30? Yeah. Do you have to watch your film at that time? Or I get here like 5.30, well I leave like 5.30, get here at like 5.50, 5.40, and then, you know, get my football clothes and everything ready, then I'm probably up there by like 6. All day? Yeah, but it's day off. Do you drink coffee? Yeah, I sleep great. Do you drink coffee or? No, I don't, I don't, I don't drink no coffee. I don't, I don't like none of that stuff. I just I just get up and get it. Do you do film study just by yourself or there are others that you watch with? You know, sometimes uh, definitely he, he will come in around like 6.30. But you know, others, uh, you know, we all got like our different routines. You know, we be having, um, we be having rehab, you know, that's like how I first developed my habits, like just waking up early and doing something before I had practice. Cause you know, I, when I came in here, I was always, you know, injured. So I always had to come in at 5.30 anyway and do all this rehab for like an hour straight before practice. So, you know, that already like just basically trained me to, you know, just since I don't got to do rehab for that no more, just transition my time to the film. You talked about how all that film studies paid off. I mean, I think it was like a month ago, Darnese was saying that you're an all AC linebacker and American, how much do you notice what uh, people are saying about you nationally or around the country? 
Toby? How, how much do you notice maybe what people are saying about you and how they listen to you? Um, I don't really, you know, focus on that type of thing. I just try to keep, you know, tunnel vision on the next team, the next opponent, and how can I help my, my people, you know, win this game. That's the main thing I really just focus on. And, you know, outside of that, everything else is going to fall in line, you know. Everybody that's, you know, on the winning team that's going to be on the 13 0 team, you know, like they're going to have awards that fall in line with that. So the main goal is to win and everything else is going to fall in line. You mentioned you've been really good in your review so far. Um, I don't know if the running back's going to be in or not, but, you know, he definitely wanted me to run it back at SMU. He's short, quick, fast. So, you know, he definitely going to have a lot of uh, OZ plays, a lot of stretch plays, you know, try to hit the field a lot of times. Um, he got. A uh, couple of uh, condensed formations where you try to get behind the linebackers, and that's the main thing. Like, you're going to try to get behind the linebacker or a uh, certain formation. They got this RPO play that they was doing a lot of us uh, last year that they kept getting like, you know, seven, ten yards. So, you know, we stopped that play. It's probably going to be like the main play of the game, and uh, it's our game. You mentioned Rasheem. I mean, how has he done throughout this whole season, you know, getting more starting? Uh, starting a few more games, getting a lot more snaps. Have you seen him grow from that special teams ace to being a true linebacker in this team? You know, I'm proud. I'm proud of him though, because you know, like I always call him like you know my twin shark. You know, because he he always you know been sharks, and I really see like myself in him. I bet he can say the same. You know, because like you don't make no excuses for myself. Like whether like. It's going to be hard to like, you know, go up in the ranks and either uh, trying to become a starter or like, you know, like in terms of ACC or just national, you know, we never make no excuses. Like, no matter how your body flowing or anything, like, you're going to put work in, you know. There was a lot of times throughout the off season, me and he, it will just be us two. Like, we will just be working on, you know, our pass rush, like just doing the same move over and over again, like hundreds of times, you know. So it's like to see like, all that like paying off like in front of my eyes, in front of his eyes, like, you know, that's like just a byproduct of the work we do. So we never gonna forget that. We just gonna keep putting in work this whole season. Kind of what is the, the drive to I mean you get up so early and you stay up so late, you know, hours of work. Um, I mean what kind of motivates you to to do all this work and put all this in your head? You know, like some days I'm feel motivated, other days I ain't gonna feel motivated. Like no matter how I feel like I definitely just, you know, just condition myself like you gotta go, you gotta go, because the world's gonna go for you, you know. That same way for on the field, like you gotta go make this play. Don't wait for the next man. You gotta go make it. They count on you, you know. Even before like people knew my name, you know, just thinking the same way. Like you gotta be the first one. You gotta be that first because if you wait for the next man, the next man probably wait for the next man. So who gonna do it? Cal, how is this team? Dealing with adversity and what's going to get it back over the, get you guys back over the hump. We've been dealing with adversity since um, since summer, since they pulled out the things that we was going to be like the top three worst AC team or whatever, you know. So we always been dealing with adversity every week this season. So you know we're not letting that affect us. Uh, it seems like we have a little toe with this three loss streak, but we're keeping the same demeanor uh, throughout practice every week. And, you know, we probably was uh, slacking during the week we played SMU, uh, especially I could speak on our defensive side, you know, with the missed tackles and that show at the end of the game. But we never changed our demeanor for any week. So we obviously going to keep going harder because this is our third loss now. We can't have more. But, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep balling definitely for people that the last season here and the people that time to step up. We're going to keep making plays, keep balling. Anything final? Kyle, after that time, Starving. This is like uh, I can probably speak for every player here. Like this is embarrassing. Like no matter if you're not an AC championship you know, contenders anymore or anything outside of that, like it's still you playing for the you know the name on your chest. So you know we got so much people that, that are looking out for us, especially when we was on that seven zero run. We had you know national attention. So you know we just we got to stop now. We can't go seven zero to seven five. You know so we we starving. To, you know. Stop this bump right now, get over it, and then, you know, just went off the rest of the season. Kyle, in that Syracuse game, you made your pick six on the new jersey, got ripped. Uh, did you do anything with that? Did you just keep it? I got that hung up on my wall.
right now. <laughs> I'm waiting for my mom to come back, and then I'm gonna give it to her, and she just gonna put it in the room where all my other stuff is at. Do you have framed or something? Or something? Yeah, I got it nice in a frame box. Like I, I made purposely sure that you know the rip part is showing and all that. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. You did time down just you, just you caught the ball, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. I love that. That was probably like my favorite play of the season, you know. And just for them to let me keep that jersey, you know. Shout out to the Clinton staff. Uh, the first thing, as soon as I uh, got out the game in the locker room, my mom said, hey, I saw the uh, pick six. She, you know, she don't know that much football, so I didn't even know if she was going to know pick six or not. But she said, like, you look so fast running the ball. Can I get the jersey? I said, yeah, you know I got you, Bob. So, nice. Yeah. Kyle, thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate it, Thanks a lot.